Guys, this is Adam Gillespie with Rancid and Sweaty Cabs coming at you with yet another video. And I couldn't help but cover this because it's more stupid garbage from woke corporations trying to race swap characters of traditionally white ethnicities uh, for the sake of adding so-called much-needed diversity and inclusion. Uh, the Wizards of the Coast race swaps Aragorn from Magic, uh, The Gathering's upcoming The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth set, our goal is a modern take on the work of J.R.R. Tolkien. And as we've known before, this never actually means that they're trying to adapt our J.R.R. Tolkien. They're trying to twist it into some woke garbage. But before I go any further, I'm just going to ask you guys, if you enjoy my content, to like this video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be alerted to every single video that I upload. And share this video with your friends. You can also check me out on Patreon and Rumble. I leave links to those in the description. But let's get into the video. In the latest example of Western entertainment's seeming obsession with reimagining J.R.R. Tolkien's semi seminal fantasy work in accordance with modern-day identity politics, Wizards of the Coast has revealed that their upcoming Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth set for Magic the Gathering will depict Aragorn as a black man. Previously announced during the company's Magic Showcase 2021, the upcoming Lord of the Rings themed set was teased as allowing players to team up with such established characters as Gandalf, Gollum, Frodo, Aragorn to battle for the One Ring scheme with Scott Saruman or journey to the heights of Mount Doom. While some fans anticipated the worst possible handling of the IP given Wizards' reputation in recent years, their fears were partially quelled by a combination of a source material accurate piece of artwork depicting Gandalf entering the Shire at Bilbo Baggins' birthday party being put forth as the set's main preview image and a belief that no other interpretation of the series could stoop to the level of Amazon's Rings of Power. And as you can see here, there's that art right there from Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, and it does look pretty cool, and it does look like it's actually some level of high-quality fantasy, but we'll get into the rest of the story, and you'll see just how stupid they are. At least they were, until a further preview of the set was given at the opening of this year's Wizards Presents, a similar livestream presentation which touches on upon the company's entire catalog of offerings rather than just their popular trading card game. Taking to the stage on August 18th, freelance host Sydney Goodman began her tease of the set's 2023 release with the assurance that Wizards' design team had worked closely with Middle-Earth Enterprises and dove deep into the source material to make sure to get it just right and that the cards and art in the series will have all the flavor and history of the original trilogy. Goodman then proceeded to, previews, to preview some of this art unveiling players to their first look at Magic the Gathering's depictions of Frodo, the Balrog, and the set's new borderless scene cards, which, when brought together, will form amazing recognizable scenes from the books like the climactic battle of Pelennor Fields outside of Gondor. However, upon her reveal of the cards depicting the latter event, fans were quick to notice a significant divergence from Tolkien's original writings, namely that rather than having a shaggy-headed, dark hair fleckled, uh, with Grey and a pale stern face as described in the books Wizards claim to have followed ever so closely, the last chieftain of the Dunedain, the Dunedain, right? Yeah, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I, sometimes I have a difficult time with that. Uh, of the North was depicted as a short-haired black man. On their own, there are glorious pieces of art, included Goodman, but put, put the, but, blah, 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 blah. sometimes words are tough, difficult, but put them together, you can see the entire story as if turning pages in the novel. Expanding on the set's upcoming release in a follow-up blog post published to their official website, Wizards shared their excitement at how the look and feel of the world, the characters and the weapons, the locations and the story moments are going to be intimately familiar yet fresh and relevant for a wider audience. The folks at Middle-Earth Enterprises take their roles as stewards very seriously, and every decision about characters has been made with deep reverence to the original wrote Wizards content manager Adam Staborski. With that in mind, together we set out to make a set that follows two guideline principles, guiding principles, diversity and originality. On the first goal, Saborski explained the Lord of the Rings is about different peoples of Middle-earth. I'm not going to read the rest of the article. I'm just going to share my thoughts in regards to this. If your main goals are diversity and originality, then you're not focused on developing an adaptation or a story that is closely influenced, if not exactly influenced, by Tolkien's works. If your main goal is to make sure that you can 
experience if you can you can push this out to a quote unquote wider audience by changing the skin color of some of the main characters then you're not writing anything or coming up with anything that is related to Tolkien's works you're creating your own thing and you're using the Tolkien label as a way to distribute it to Tolkien fans to an already previously established fan base that has many many fans of the product you don't want to actually do something you don't want to actually create a program create something involving what has already been previously established by Tolkien works what you want is you want to create your own bullcrap woke fantasy that has all of the diversity points that you want but you want the Tolkien name strapped to it so that you can get the fan base so that people can look at what it is that you've made up and say, oh yeah, that's Tolkien. You want the previously established fan base that loves the original works to like your new garbage. There is literally no reason in any sense of the word to race swap Aragorn. There is no reason to take something that is so clearly defined and described in the book as shaggy-headed and a freckled, uh, a beard, shaggy-headed and a scruffy beard with a, uh, I'm forgetting the word, with white hairs in there, as well as a pale, stern face, and turn that into a short-haired black guy with probably a nice, decent lotion skincare routine, too, so he doesn't get ashy on the battlefield. No, there's no reason for that. Just like there's no reason to alter the ethnicities or the ethnic coloration of a person's skin in regards to the race of elves or dwarves, because Tolkien described the elves and dwarves as having light, fair skin. The elves are born in a place where there is no sun, therefore they do not need... Therefore, they do not need a high level of melanin to exist in a place that has no sun. And the dwarves do not have uh, dark pigmentation because they're born in cave-like areas. They're born away from the sun all the same. The humans have different levels of ethnicities and different levels of pigmentation of skin, but also based off of whatever climate or region they are in is heavily informative as to the type of skin color a person will possess. Cooler climates produce people with lighter skin tones. Warmer climates produce people with darker skin tones. This is a very understood scientific fact. People can move from place to place. Yes, that's obvious, but it's not what they're actually doing. They're just injecting diversity for the sake of injecting diversity. They don't want to follow Lord of the Rings. They don't want to live up to the expectation that Tolkien fans have for the content regarding Tolkien's works. They want to inject their own political garbage into something that has a pre-established fan base and hope that they can pander to said fan base and get all the money in the world. They've been doing this with Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, DC Comics, Marvel Comics. They've done that with every major franchise, and now they're coming after Lord of the Rings. And it's not just Amazon. It's a bunch of different corporations that are trying to do this, like Magic the Gathering and Wizards of the Coast. And it's getting so old. I wouldn't be surprised if there was an, an, uh, if there was an announcement saying, If you don't like this, then you're racist within the next couple of days. Because let's be honest, it's pointless. And their only play is to call you, the person who actually wants the stories to be representative of what Tolkien wrote, you, they want to call you racist and belittle you because they don't like the fact that you would actually stick up for the lore. And that's all they do. It's the exact same playbook. If they can make it seem like somehow you're the problem in not liking them creating this garbage interpretation of the story that you and millions of other fans around the world have loved and cherished and enjoyed then they can take away what was so special about Tolkien's works to begin with which is that it's just a good story about good versus evil 
If they can belittle you and shame you into thinking like them, then they can make sure that their stupid content gets more views and they can push it out to infect more young minds. It's just, it's, a, it's the same playbook. It's been going on for practically a whole decade, maybe even longer. It's been going on for way longer. It's been going on since the day I was born, probably even longer after than that. I mean, at least in terms of what we can see on the forefront. But it's no secret. They just want to inject their politics into this stuff, and they want to tear it down and make it something that they see as virtuous, despite the fact that it's actually some of the most illegitimate, non-virtuous bullcrap out there. Probably the most vain stuff in the world. <sighs> Well, they say that the, the, the worth of a character is based off of their sexuality or based off of the color of their skin or some other bullcrap like that. It's the same playbook that a bunch of slave traders used back in the day. It's the same playbook that Indians used when they would raid each other's teepee huts. It's the same playbook that kingdoms would use when they would go to war against other kingdoms so they could expand their kingdom. It's the same stupid tactic that people use to divide and conquer. And it's getting old because we can all see through it. Everyone with two brain cells to rub together can see through this garbage. And it's not working with Tolkien because people are devoted to the original source material. And I hope that we continue to fight for it. But that's going to do it for this video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon so you'll be alerted to every single video that, you, that I upload. And make sure to comment down below your thoughts in regards to this situation and the woke is woke wokeification, the social justice warriorification, the wokeification of Tolkien's works, along with every other major franchise out there. And also follow me over on Rumble and Patreon. Soon enough, I'll get an Indiegogo running for my comic. If you guys want me to share some of the artwork that I do, then make sure to leave a like and, and comment down below that you want me to share some of the artwork that, I, that I've been working on for my comic. But that's, that's besides the point. That's going to be a separate video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week.